Welcome back to the Soonerscoop.com studios. Eddie Radosovich, George Stoy here. It is Monday, August 7th, and uh, we just got back. Number yep. four practice for Oklahoma today. Uh, they are right back into the swing of things, obviously, with, uh, you know, the start of the week and, you know, kind of, a, I guess, a, a little bit of their first off day, if you will, coming up uh, over the weekend on Sunday. Had the Sooner appreciation, all that kind of stuff. Meet the Sooners Day. I don't even know what they call it anymore, but uh, back to football. Had the number two viewing session for the Oklahoma media today, a, about a 40-minute session out at the rugby fields. Oklahoma's moved practice back over to uh, the rugby fields for the next couple weeks as they work through, uh, I don't even know. I don't know where we're going with that, George. What did you think about number two practice for, uh, number four practice, but our second viewing? A yeah. little bit more intensive on special teams and things like that, but, uh, you know, I it's still good to get out there. I was with a different group than I went with on Friday. So, I know that you went with the wide receivers for a little bit. Just yeah. kind of your overall thoughts on the afternoon. Yeah, well, they were they were in pads today. I think that's I think it was the first practice they were in pads. I don't know if they were on Saturday, but we did get to see them in pads. Um, but yeah, I, I you know last week we talked a lot about the defense. I paid attention a lot to the linebackers and and up front on on the defensive line. Uh, today I was more with the receivers and the tight ends. Watched a little bit of the running backs too, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there were several guys that stood out. Nick Anderson is a guy that you know I finally got to get a you know good look at him, and he he looks the part. Uh, he looks like a guy. Obviously, he's tall, six foot four, but uh, he he fills out nicely. He was also a guy that was leading some of the drills, which I know we said that in the last video. That's what you kind of want to see from guys that are maybe trying to earn a spot. So uh, I thought he looked impressive. I know that um, Lebby talked a little bit about him after practice today. Um, Emmett Jones is super intense over there, uh, very detail-oriented uh, coach. And, and I think that you look back at last season, some of the fundamental issues with that group, I think some of those will go away this year, just the way that he practices, the way that he makes guys go through drills again if they mess them up, uh, and just the way he communicates. And then another guy that I think really stood out was Petaway. Uh, I know we, we've heard a lot of buzz about him this summer, the true freshman. It sounds like he's come in and, and done a really nice job. He was another guy that Lebby brought up as somebody that's kind of stood out um, and a guy that he really doesn't look like a true freshman. I know that's cliche to say. Everybody says that he doesn't look like a freshman out there. Um, that's true with him. He, he's a guy that, that certainly looks big enough to play at this level, and uh, he looked impressive today. You know, one of the first things I think we'll get to is some of the wide receiver talk, obviously talking about Petaway. Uh, he made some plays on Friday. It was a guy that it was even noted uh, by Brent Venables that he was making plays during the team portion yep. of uh, Friday's practice. But first things first, Let's get this out of the way because I know that the internets were ablaze this morning when you put it out there that Gavin Sawchuk wasn't at practice. Kind of a weird situation. He was at practice. He just wasn't out there during the viewing session. Yeah, I don't know where he was. Um, you know, and I, I didn't really catch it until about halfway through the viewing session. So maybe he was out there when I, you know, wasn't paying attention early on, but um, he was out there at the end of practice. After practice, I saw him walk off the field. We asked Jeff Lebby, and he kind of looked at us like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he was here today. But you go back and you watch the videos of the running backs, he definitely missed a good portion of the individual drill. So maybe it was something where he got caught up stretching or um, maybe he's going to the bathroom. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I don't think there's any worry there. He looked fine walking off the field. Today. We'll need some stool samples if he was going to the restroom. <laughs> Somebody that was out there today in the running back group was Javante Barnes, and we had a chance to talk to him after practice, it's kind of exciting when you realize, you know, how good he was as a freshman. And then, you know, you look at what he did in the bowl game, obviously in the Cheez-It Bowl. I swear at some point I'm going to stop saying obviously. Now I'm kind of like paranoid every time I say it. But we did talk to him after practice. Sky's the limit for this guy. It yep. sounds like, you know, he got the uh, the foot situation figured out, missed most of spring, but there's a lot of positives to talk about when you're talking about Javante Barnes. Yeah, I mean, physically, he looks great, right? I mean, he he stands out in that group, and, and part of that's because he's a little bit taller than everybody else, but he also just muscular looks really good. Um, and that sounds odd to say, but it's true. Like, he just looks the part... Um, you know, we were talking a little bit about some of the, the guys before. He looks a little bit kind of like Trey Sermon to me, and Trey Sermon was obviously a very physically impressive guy. Um, you know, what, what really impressed me about him today is he comes out there, and he, I think he was one of the last media interviews to do. So you have about 20, 25 people circling around him, and he's comfortable. He, he likes to talk. 
Uh, I thought he was he was a great interview. He's very confident in himself. He talked about wanting to be that lead guy. Wanted, you know, he was hungry to have a bigger role this season. Feels good about his foot. He had foot surgery, obviously, in the spring. Missed a lot of spring practice, but something that he's kind of had since high school, and he got it out of the way. Feels great. Feels the best he's ever felt. So um, I had, I expect a big year from him. I think he's gonna be the starting running back. I think it's gonna be interesting to see how they rotate those guys because Levy talked. You know, they want to have six guys there in terms of guys that they feel comfortable and have a, have a good stable. And DeMarco Murray's done a really good job with that room and kind of rebuilding it. But I think Javante, we're going to look up at the end of the season, he's going to be their leading rusher and maybe even one of their top leading receivers because he's a guy that I think can do a lot of things out of the backfield. Here is Jeff Levy, Oklahoma offense coordinator, talking about the running back room as well as Javante Barnes after practice on Monday. We've, we've got to continue to create depth in that room. We've got guys that, again, are, are really capable. We've got three guys in there that have some game day experience. Um, but, again, we, we want to see those guys continue to work and, and end up going into week one with five or six guys so that, you know, you got an entire stable. And, again, the reason we can get that done is because we've got guys that are capable. they just got to continue to get better every day. I just feel like I'm more hungry and I'm more energized and I'm more ready. Um, I'm just – I feel like I'm more locked in and focused. I know I said this uh, last time when I talked to you guys, but this is the honest truth. I feel like I'm more locked in and I'm more excited. Um, definitely with the hold back with my injury, um, I feel like just coming back from that, I just knew I was going to knock it off. I was working my butt off. Um, and right now I'm just taking it step by step, try, you feel me? Just going step by step and going practice by practice. So um, I'm just excited to be back and just be out here with my boys. It's fall camp, it's a, it's, it's a work, but I'm getting through it. For sure, I feel like there's no other way I could have handled it. Um, I feel like me and DeMarco both talked, and um, we just kind of said, yeah, we're going to do it this way, and it went great. So um, I'm back here, back out here practicing, no problems, um, getting extra work with Smitty and stuff. So just those two, just making sure they stay on me and making sure I, I get extra film, extra work, even when I'm not practicing, I feel like that was just a good way to come back. So that was Jeff Levy and Javante Barnes. Obviously, you know, like we were just saying, there's a lot of excitement in that running back room. You're adding Gavin Sawchuk and what he was able to do in the Cheez It Bowl. Uh, you know, it's going to be kind of fun. And then you have a Marcus Major who, you know, obviously, as uh, Jeff Levy said there, they're bringing him along slowly. They want to keep him on the field this season. Uh, but when he has been on the field, he's been pretty damn good. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they use Marcus Major because he's a guy that I look at and say, okay, when he's healthy, he can give you some, some nice nice plays he's a guy that can do some different things right so I wonder is he a guy that gets six to eight carries a game maybe he comes in late in games maybe he's a guy that starts games off I don't know but I, I think he's a guy that can help them obviously they trust him he's been in the system so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they use him but it's it's fun listening to a Javante Barnes and, and I'm sure we'll talk to Gavin here soon because those guys year one I think their heads were spinning right and, and you were around them last year but it sounds like those guys are so much more confident going into year two under Brent Venables and just this coaching staff. And I know we've talked a lot about that on the defense. We talked to Jaron Kanick. I, I don't know if you want to get into that yet, but he's another guy that uh, comes out there second year. He just sounds so much more confident. Absolutely. All the post-practice interviews, too, if you're interested in looking at them or interested in watching them, you can find them on the Scoop Editorial page. Just Scoop Editorial, YouTube, pretty easy to find. I know you people probably will have a tough time doing that at I get it. I get it. Uh, somebody that we did talk to as well after practice on Monday, somebody that you wrote about immediately after practice was the evolving position or the evolving, uh, you know, just what he is as a player in Jaron Canick. And, you know, there's yep. a lot of hype going into uh, that other linebacker position opposite Danny Stessman. It's something that we talked about right here on this Sooner Scoop uh, YouTube page, just as far as kind of what that thing is how important that is to Brent Venable's defense, but he's a guy that has very high expectations and he's getting a lot of load as far as what they're going to be throwing at him. Yeah, and I think you go back and you watch last season and, and when Jaron played, you're like, man, that guy really stands out. And, and he's obviously super gifted athletically and a guy that I think is going to be a star. But the biggest learning curve for him, for him was he was playing a position he's never played before. And we've harped on that and, and he talked about that after practice today, I spoke with him for a long time, and, and he talked about just learning the defense. He said, you know, after the season, he goes, Brent sat him down and just said, hey, you need to learn the de the defense. You need to learn your position. And so he spent 
most of his off season, uh, not only in the weight room, but in the film room. Um, and it sounds like him and Brent maybe had some one-on-one sessions where they sat down and watched some film together. He's obviously attached to the hip at, with Danny Stutzman. You see that on social media. It sounds like Danny's really taking him under his wing. Uh, and he's a guy that I think is the front runner to win that job. I think they're going to rotate some guys there. I think Kobe McKenzie looks great out there. Obviously, they bring in Connor Near, a guy that I also wrote about over the weekend. I think all three of those guys are going to get some time, but Canick definitely, you can tell, feels way more comfortable in the system. He's learning it. I still think it'll be a bit of a process, but I think by the end of the season, he's going to be your guy at Mike Linebacker. It seems like that's one of the things, too. When you talk to any of these guys defensively, and we'll get into Desal McCulloch, we'll get into Justin Harrington here in a second, it seems like everybody, that's like the number one thing. Outside of competitive depth, if there's another like key catchphrase, buzzword type deal with this Oklahoma football team right now, it's just a comfort within the system. Yeah, and I think you, I mean, look, Britt runs a, a difficult scheme, sure. right? I mean, that we've heard that time and again, how big the playbook is, and so... I think last year their heads were spinning a little bit. And and you could see that even on the field at times. The communication wasn't always there. I think it got better as the season went on. But I think that now that they're, they have a year in the system, they're learning it better. Maybe they're teaching it differently. I don't know. Maybe that's a question for Brent. But it definitely seems like a lot of those guys that were playing last year uh, that struggle at times – all of a sudden are coming back this year saying, hey, I, I get it now. I, I'm seeing better. I'm understanding what they're asking me to do. Uh, and then obviously, like we've said, physically, they look they look great. So I, I think that, again, it's another step in the right direction. We'll see, right? I think, sure. I think yeah. you know, every August you hear that, oh, I feel so much better. I feel, feel so much more comfortable. Until we see it on the field, we'll, you know, we actually, you know, do we believe it yet? Here is Jaron Kanick after practice on Monday. Last year was was a big you know learning curve for me, especially coming out of high school and not playing very much defense at all. You know, it was, I, I had a lot a lot of the mental aspect to, to make up for, but you know it's just the extra time that the linebackers have spent in the form room and trying to get that holistic understanding. You know, we've we've made a lot of a lot of steps and came a long way with that. Obviously, getting experience last year, getting on the field in some facet was probably good. But how much do you feel like your game took a step this summer? Just learning, being around Danny every day, and mm-hmm. getting in the film room things. Like it's that. it's night and day. You know, last year I was I was kind of just surviving out there. Yeah. You know, I'd, I I was flying around trying to do what I could, but I didn't really have the full mental understanding. But you know, just this summer and you know even through the winter, starting the winter, coming through the summer, just you know getting those reps and, and summer reps and just trying to learn and getting the meetings with the linebackers, trying to get a, a mental understanding of it, just has made a huge impact and a huge difference in my game today. Jaron Kanick isn't the only guy that has been talking about being more comfortable. He's, you know, obviously going from his freshman year to what he is now, uh, you're going to see, you know, I think there's some obvious, sorry, maturation there that, you know, it's, it was going to take some time. And I think that, you know, that was kind of one of those things too, that even going back into the season a year ago, that everybody thought everything was going to be okay just because Brent Venables was going to be on the sidelines. And for, you know, Jaron individually, as well as a couple other guys, it is just getting more comfortable within the defense, understanding where they need to be. And one of those guys, I think, even though he wasn't here a year ago, he came in during the spring, is one of their biggest transfer portal additions, and that's Desan McCulloch. Uh, we've seen him, obviously, we, we kind of talked about him uh, last week as far as what we see when he's out there during the individual drills and that kind of stuff, but we talked to Justin Harrington today as well. Both of those guys are really interesting because you're talking about a cheetah position that you know obviously is, is a, and I did it again, I swear, at some point, <laughs> it's just my crutch right here. It's a position of importance for Brent Venables in that defense. Yep. And, you know, you look at it, what Isaiah Simmons was able to do at Clemson. We're starting to kind of see how it maybe comes together, though. Two very distinct, different types of players in Justin Harrington and DeSalle McCulloch. Yeah, I mean, I think Justin is a guy that, obviously, he played safety, so I think he's probably a little bit better in coverage. Maybe he's a guy that you bring in in those certain situations where you want an extra defender out there to, to defend the pass. Whereas McCulloch, I mean, he led Indiana in sacks last year. I mean, he's a guy that can get after the quarterback. Maybe you bring him in and he comes off the edge on a, on a blitz or a stunt or something like that. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how they use those two guys. Both are great athletically. Uh, I feel like we say that about Justin Harrington every single year, right? There's a lot of hype about him in the offseason. Can he finally maybe live up to that? He's another guy going back to a guy like Canick. Another year in the system, right? Maybe he feels a little bit more comfortable. Maybe that gives him a leg up on a McCulloch. If, if you're going, who's going to start at that cheetah position? I think that 
you know, Harrington being in the system previously could maybe help him a little bit. And he sounds a lot more comfortable speaking to him today. Um, you know, he's he's a leader on this defense. He's very vocal during practice, along with Danny Stutzman. It seems like those are the two guys kind of leading the defense right now. So I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. And it seems like they work well together. They like each other. And McCulloch's still young. I mean, you know, I think people think of him as this, this guy that's coming in that's this multi-year starter and a veteran. He was a true freshman last year at Indiana. He had a great year, but he still has a long ways to go. He's only, what, 19, 20 years old. So um, I think people need to be patient with him, and I, I think he can be a star. He just still has a little bit of a ways to go. Here is Justin Harrington and DeSaul McCulloch talking on their first and second season as they move forward with Brent Venables. Um, it's still it's still a lot to grow, but um, yes, I, I'm, I feel comfortable and I'm just uh, again learning everybody what everybody's job is, learning what you know the Will Backer's job, and you know talking to Danny and, and learning what the free safety and strong safety's job is. You know, kind of helps me with my job and, and it makes me more versatile. Just uh, for coach to throw me out there if uh, somebody goes down, I can I can play all three safety positions, counting the cheetah, quote unquote, and, and you know everything else. So yeah, I mean I feel a lot more confident coming out here, having uh, the whole spring behind me and the whole summer too. We were doing a lot in the summer so I feel a lot more comfortable in my play and playing out in space and covering. What, what was your focus in summer? Uh, really just to work on my footwork covering. Uh, I'd say Indiana to here the biggest jump was uh, the coverage aspect of things and how much more coverage I'm doing. So I just really wanted to hone in and focus on that this summer and also put on a little bit of weight. He's more confident and again just with being around um, I mean I feel like I kind of took him under my wing just to help him out kind of see him. Like, um, He's just a different player. He's moving a little bit faster. He's all, already freak athlete, um, but just different player. Just coach again, just a step above um, the trust and the what position he uh, not not cheetah, but what the the level of like position he needs to play and where they need to be uh, put him at. I mean, he's he's done everything he's he needs to do. Justin Harrington's a really fascinating player because obviously there has been so many times that we've been in this exact same spot talking about, well, Justin Harrington is going to make this move or he's going to be a guy. And I think he came, even when he came in from Juco, it was like, he's going to make an immediate impact. And then it never happened. And then you have the coaching change. And then it sounds like he was going to enter the transfer portal and he came back. And a big part of that was Brent Venables. Yeah. And I, I think that it just speaks to Brent's relationships that he's built, obviously with these players. It, you, you talk to some of these defensive guys and, and the message seems to be getting through to them and, and they believe in what he's doing. I mean, there's a lot of guys that, you know, you go six and seven and, and you finish 99th in total defense uh, last season. There's a lot of guys that could have said, what are we doing? I, I don't believe in the, the direction of this thing. That does not seem to be the case. And, and Justin talked a little bit about that after practice and just believing in Brent. And, and I think that that's a big part of this, right? You have to have buy-in moving forward with this group. And it seems like most of the guys on defense are. Here is Justin Harrington just talking about his relationship with Brent Venables and kind of believing in what they're building and the culture that they are trying to put in at Oklahoma. Really, Coach V kind of, kind of um, kept me close. Just you know, he he said he had big plans for me, and I and I very, I very much so trust him. Um, just with me coming back, uh, almost what two years now, just after last season. Um, he, he was just, I just kind of trusted him. I trust him a lot. Just watching the film with, um, you know, guys like Isaiah Simmons, you know, I, I pride myself on being rangy, you know, being very athletic and, you know, being a great teammate, period. So um, I did, though, you do have those dark days, but, you know, when you come out in fall camp, you come out, you have a spring, that, that doesn't happen by accident just because you keep your, your mind on the right thing and, and, you know what I'm saying, you pray every day, you just keep your mind, your mind right and just stay sane, stay calm. Obviously, some positives there, and you know it's it's going to evolve. It's still rather early in camp, uh, plenty to play out here over the course of the next month before Oklahoma's season opener, September second, against Arkansas State. One of the guys that will be a big part of that September second is Jalil Farouk, and we had the chance to talk to him on Monday after practice. You know, the wide receiver position, it's. Very interesting. There's so many guys. Yep. Jeff Lebby talked about kind of developing that wide receiver unit today. Let's go to Jeff Lebby first, and then we'll come back and we'll talk to or talk about Jalil Farouk. Well, you're you're wanting different guys to have great days, and you're wanting the whole group to have great days every day. I mean, that's the reality of it. Again, you know, we talked about this a couple of days ago, but we want to play with seven guys at the receiver position to where you can go rotate, and man, guys are fresh and fast and healthy, and that's what we got to create. We're four days in; it's been a good start, but that room's got to continue to come on, just like everybody else. Seven guys is a lot. Yeah, I mean, but you when you hear it. 
I just kind of want to see it. I know that that's something that we've talked about on the unofficial 40 as far as, you know, how many guys are actually going to be in this rotation for Emmett Jones and Jeff Levy at their disposal. Uh, one of those guys, pretty damn obvious. It's going to be Jalil Farouk, though. Uh, what do you expect to see just kind of from Farouk? I, we saw him in so many roles last year. And, yeah. you know, he goes into his third season in Norman. He's on to his third wide receivers coach. Hopefully there's some stability there. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just going to find unique ways to get him the ball. And and you saw that a little bit last year, whether it was handing him the ball in the backfield, tossing it to him, you know, getting him out in space, because he is a guy that can do a lot of different things. I mean, you think back, obviously, to the Emmett Jones comment, you know, calling him Percy Harvin. Um, we'll see. That's a pretty big uh, comparison, but that's the type of guy that they want to use, right? Like they want to use him in certain and in, in different ways. And um, it's going to be interesting because teams are going to key in on him, right? I mean, last year things opened up for him because so many teams were focused on Marvin Mims. What does that look like this year? I mean, can other guys, can a Gavin Freeman, can a Drake Stoops, can Nick Anderson, Andrew Anthony, can those guys create space themselves to allow a guy like Jalil Farouk to be that number one receiver? And, you know, I think it's also on Jalil to, to just make those plays. I mean, we, we've seen him be a good wide receiver, but can he take it to the next level? Can he be that guy that comes up big and in big situations? And who's going to take advantage if they do try yep. to double team him? And, you know, one of those guys that's kind of growing a little bit of a, a name for himself here early in the first portion of Oklahoma's preseason has been the true freshman, Jaquez Petaway. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I think anybody that covers uh, or that follows the recruiting side of things knows there's a lot of speed there. He can do a little bit of everything. But I asked Jeff Levy after practice on Monday, yeah, does he look not so much like a freshman, but somebody that's been around this program for maybe longer than he has been? He's a really strong-bodied kid, so when he's got the ball in his hands, he kind of turns into a running back. So he's going to be able to do some some good things. You know, the biggest strain for him is, man, knowing what to do all the time when he gets tired and when it's happening fast and people are yelling and being able to still go execute. But proud of where he is four days in and again he, we're, we're gonna like him really good to hear about Jaquez Petaway I it's kind of exciting because I think everybody that watched his high school film and followed his recruitment to Norman uh, knew that he was a big time player when Oklahoma was able to get him but it's going to be kind of interesting in a way to see how this whole thing comes together that's about it though I mean it yeah. was it was it was kind of a light day but I think that that's what you want as Oklahoma moves into their second week of practice yeah I mean I'd love to see some hitting I thought yeah. we might get some of that today I know last year they did some Oklahoma drill and that, that kind of stuff so I, I was curious to see if we got to see that we did get to see some routes on air uh, so get to see some guys catch some catch some passes Jackson Arnold looked uh, great again. I don't Are you know. trying to create controversy here? Is <laughs> hey, that what's just, going on? I it, know that people love to hear about Jackson. He looks really good. I, I thought Dylan looked good too out there, but um, you know, I, yeah, it was it was a light day. I, you know, I was glad to go over and see some of our wide receivers. Like you said, Petaway definitely stands out. I think he's going to be a guy that ends up being one of those seven uh, that Lebby's talking about. A little about. bit bigger body than oh. I imagined, too, yeah, I mean, coming well, out of he, high school. Well, yeah, and you, you watch his film, and he looks kind of like a skinny guy and, and just a, a, a burner, but he's definitely filled out. He, I mean, I think he's up to 185, which is a good weight for him, um, and a guy that can really get down the field. So his role, I think he's going to be one of those guys, and I've said this before, I think he's going to be one of those guys that we, we, we look up at maybe the Texas game, and he has a breakout performance right maybe it doesn't happen early in the season but about halfway through all of a sudden he's a guy that's really contributing so much speed at the wide receiver position yep. it's going to be a lot of fun i the one group that i did spend quite a bit of time with today i wanted to get a little bit more defensive end stuff because i really didn't hang around them very much on friday Ronda Bothroyd's a man. Yeah. I, I think that when you look at that transfer group, and, you know, Trace Ford's going to be in there, obviously. You're going to have P.J. Adebore, who physically just looks incredible. He, he looks young, but physically it's what you yeah. want. Long for days, like uh, Miguel Chavez said back in the spring. It's kind of coming together. I mean, they're obviously going to have to make a lot of plays when they get out there and they get their opportunities. But that defensive line slash defensive end group, they have so many bodies Surely some of those guys are going to be able to step up. Yeah, and it sounds like we'll get to talk to maybe uh, Rondell tomorrow, so that'll be great to hear from him. But just physically, he looks like something that they didn't have a year ago, and, and, and he has the production to back it up. Because I think that you could also say Reggie Grimes looks great out there, but at times he wasn't consistent last year. So can a Rondell Bothroyd come in, set the edge, get after the passer? I think he led Wake Forest in sacks last year. So uh, he's another guy that I think can help them a ton. And then Atabare, man, I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with him because yeah. he's a guy, he's again, he's one of those young guys that I think has a ton of talent, 
Um, but what does it look like on the field? And, and do they ease him into it, or they just throw him out there uh, the first few games? Throw him out there. That's that's <laughs> what I want to see, especially if you're up early yeah. in, in games. They're going to have ample opportunity throughout the non-conference if things go as planned to get a bunch of guys reps. And that's something that even Brent Venables talked about uh, going back to, I think, even his opening press conference for this season was they want to be able to play more guys. So yep. it's going to be obviously a lot of fun here over the course of the season. Hey, by the way, all of the uh, gear behind us, check out SoonerScoopStore.com. You can get that. We'll be up here. We'll be able to send it out. Uh, I know that you know these were one of the top sellers, the uh, Sleep, eat, repeat, run rule, yep. whatever shirts. Get the hats too. Get I have, the hats. The hats are great. The hats are great. T-shirts are cool. Very much so. We're really good salesmen at this <laughs> yeah. thing. I'm sure the uh, the YouTube comment section will be quite kind to us. Hey, I got a different shirt today too. So you people lay off. Me. New shirt. Get off my back. New shirt, and maybe we'll come up with something like a buzzer every time you say obviously. To just it would just you. it would just be a constant ding <laughs> the entire time and we're gonna work on that okay and the other thing dollar promo on three sooner scoop uh it's a great deal right now and yep. especially during the middle of camp yeah no i mean listen if, if you want to uh read some exclusive stuff uh you know read you know my story on jaron canick or the mail you know, the connor or, near uh, question or the connor near story over yeah, the, the weekend. feature over the weekend was was a good one obviously bob's notes and observations from practice are great josh with the recruiting scoop stuff so um definitely the perfect time to sign up especially right before the season gets going because you know right now things are ramping up i mean look how much content we were able to get out today so definitely use that to your advantage 100 percent. and you know there is a bunch of stuff out there as far as recruiting goes from josh McQuestion, recruiting publisher with soonerscoop.com oklahoma with a commitment over the weekend we'll hit on all of that kind of stuff at the uh, or during the unofficial 40 during the week so from the soonerscoop.com studios on campus corner george stoya i'm eddie radosovich we'll talk to you tomorrow